Get up. Hey YouTubers, if you like what you hear, make sure you click subscribe and the button below. Today we're going to talk about dynasty startups and player value from a wide receiver standpoint. So crack a cold one and enjoy. In a world where losing in your fantasy football league isn't an option, we present to you the Triple Coverage Podcast. Jermaine, Curse, Andre, Holmes, I can take you to the promised land. Ain't it funny? Rumors fly, and I know you heard about TCP. Let's be friends. I'm dying to see how this one ends. Grab your helmet and my hand. I can make a sleeper good for a weekend. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Three, two, <laughs> one. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Triple Coverage Podcast. I'm Travis Sutton. I'm here with the, the boys up, the brothers. Taylor Swift. Woo woo. What's up, guys? And uh, <laughs> Tretch over here. Yeah. Woo woo. Uh, we are going to do some wide receiver kind of uh, player value from an ADP kind of standpoint for startup kind of value. Uh, we'll get into a few of the guys that we kind of have some interest in talking about we thought were interesting. Do you guys don't have anything you guys want to get into before we start rocking and rolling? Uh, the one thing I want to do is give a little bit of credit to the website we got it from. It's uh, DLF, Dynasty League Football. So we kind of use their ADP just to kind of help us out with finding out where guys are going on an average draft position. Yeah, for June. We're using their their, uh, their June draft ADP from the mock drafts that they, uh, they did for uh, June. They do great work, and we're going to bite off it a little bit. We're going to turn into... We're going to put our own great, spin on A it. great conversation. Yeah, we are. Yes, yeah, great conversation. We're good friends. Let's start with the highest guy in the ADP that we're going to talk about today, Josh Gordon. Uh, 44th overall, so you have him at about the 408, and he's the 21st wide receiver being taken off the board. Hmm. Um, did you see the picture on Twitter of him and Baker Mayfield saying he's never seen anybody like him? The hype has started again. I don't know if I can fall into the Josh Gordon hype again. Like, I don't know how many times you're going to fall for it of, you know, the overhype. But if I own Josh Gordon, I would wait until right before the season starts and I would sell him for as much as I could get. Because I just don't, I don't know, I don't know what you're going to get there. I really don't. Now they brought in Landry and they have Corey Coleman still. Callaway obviously is out with an injury right now. They have Njoku. There's just so many targets to go around, and I just don't see any of those guys getting 100-plus catches and 10 touchdowns and having just a monstrous season because there's so many of the guys to, to throw to. Here's For what, what I, you have to pay for him. Here's why I like his gun. He's 20-something. 21st wide receiver. 21st wide receiver. Though. This is why I like his but he, So then he'll be your wide receiver too. Correct. Okay. You're getting a, a guy that could be I'm not saying he's going to be, but he could be a possible wide receiver one. He has the talent to be. And I know the situation is not fantastic because he has Landry there as well and a bunch of other moving uh, pieces there. But you have a chance of getting a wide receiver one with the 44th overall pick. So it's not a super flex league. We're talking just regular dynasty startup. So if you decided to go wide receiver and then running back, running back, and then wide receiver again in the fourth, and you have Josh Gordon as your second, mm -hmm. I don't like him as my first, but I love him as my second. And that's where the value you're getting him. So I think this is actually a pretty good value to be able to grab him in the fourth round. Yeah, well, I, th I think why not? I mean, the, the upside is, is there. Uh, it's it's not like you haven't seen it before. It's not like he's a rookie uh, and you haven't seen anything in the NFL. But you haven't seen it in, you haven't seen it in a while. Four years. 2013. Five years. <laughs> like, at what? Like, uh, here, I guess my, my thing is... Do you is, believe he doesn't have is, the talent to do anything? Um, well, when Jay... I broke down a few things. When Jay said the talent is there. So the talent's there because of that one gigantic season. So, like, the, the talent just stays there forever. He played a little bit last year. and Did you not see any kind of... Like, okay, yeah, he could come back to form? I'm just not... With what they have in Tyrod Taylor and Baker Mayfield, who's a rookie who hasn't really proven anything yet in the NFL or on the NFL level, I like Baker Mayfield, but, like, I just don't... I don't know. Like, he's, it's not like he's playing with Drew Brees or, or Andrew Luck or, or like you know Aaron Rodgers. He's not playing with one of those guys, a Tom Brady, that's like going to throw the ball 50 times a game. I don't think Cleveland's going to throw the ball over the field and make these guys you know wide receiver ones, any of those guys. Maybe Jarvis Landry, that's about it. Uh, but the fact that everyone's on Amari Cooper for bulking up and getting big, did you see the picture of Josh Gordon? He's gigantic. Why does that not count against 
Why are people more, when you bring up Josh Gordon and how he looked like a damn machine because he was like chiseled, everyone's like, man, Josh Gordon is, is that, he looks awesome, he looks great, he looks blah, 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 blah. Then they show a picture of Mari Cooper who bulked up a couple pounds and everyone's like, it's going to make him slower, it's going to make him have this, this. It's, it's like negative to Mari Cooper, but why is it a positive of Josh Gordon? When Cooper has actually had consistent seasons at least, whereas Gordon had one good season since 2013. Anybody want to answer that? Like, yeah, why, why reason, is it a negative for him but a positive for Josh Gordon? Well, first of all, I, I don't think that Josh Gordon looks like a, a bodybuilder. No, Josh you Gordon don't? looks like he's, like he's chiseled. Let me, let me show you the picture as you're talking. Go ahead. He looks, he looks chiseled. He looks cut up. He has 0% body fat. Yeah, you've seen the picture. Yes. Oh, he's you, seen it. He's huge, dude. I don't think it's as big as like you're as you're ex okay. claiming it to be. I think he looks I think he looks big, but I don't think he looks like David Boston looked like in his last year of San Diego. And I don't think Cooper. I think the reason why you're saying it's a negative for Cooper, Josh Gordon's kind of always been built like that. Whereas Cooper wasn't really. <laughs> Look at his arms. <laughs> yeah, he's he's like in motion. And he's so flexing. All, 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 yeah, all his muscles are good. Yeah, he's got he's like... He's flexing. His, his Cooper, body fat is clearly, it's, it's very low. and he's The shape. pictures you're talking about, Amari Cooper, he's just standing there. Like for a photo shoot, he's not flexing and his arms look huge. He's not even flexing his arms. Okay. But I don't know. I mean, I've heard... I haven't heard that this is such a huge positive for Gordon, uh, like for his game or anything like that. I've right. heard a lot of talk about how muscular he looks, like defined and definition and all that kind of stuff. But I, I think he's got the talent uh, that we've seen. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think anybody's expecting anybody to be a hundred catch guy in Cleveland. And like for where you're getting Gordon, I wouldn't. He wouldn't need to do that for me to feel right justified in taking him as the, you know like the twenty. He could be your third as the fourth round. Like right. if you go running back and then three wide receivers or however you do it, he could end up being your third. It doesn't have to be your second even. So I mean I I feel like the value is is good. It's right. It's worth taking a shot on because you're not putting it all on him to succeed and play in that risk game. But you got a big reward if he's your second or third. Possibly. And that's the way risk. that's the way I kinda of feel too. No one thinks he's gonna repeat what he did in two thousand thirteen. There's no. not anybody out there no. saying that he's gonna do that again. But what we're saying is the talent is there. I believe he's only twenty six years old. Twenty seven. Twenty seven. So he the talent's there. Uh, he can definitely be a viable wide receiver two or even better wide receiver three if you get him as your third receiver. So with where he's going in drafts, he's not going as your number one unless you went three I, running backs I, I just, to start off I, the draft. I think it's too high. I think it's I think it's very too high for, for a couple of different reasons. One being because he hasn't done it in so long, and yes, you saw a little flat. His nickname is perfect, Flash. You see a little tiny flash, everyone blows their wad on it, and then you might not see it for another year or two or three, or you might be suspended or you might get in trouble. And for me to, to risk taking a guy in the fourth round of somebody that is one time away from being completely banned from the NFL of smoking a, cig a joint or smoking uh, whatever or drinking or just failing a drug test like randomly, like... I'm not willing to take a fourth round pick on a guy that could be out of the league by next week. Is is that's a big concern for you? One hundred percent, yes. Um, that's a main concern. That and the fact that he hasn't done it consistent ever. He had one gigantic year, and then everything else has just been right. And cl clearly, he had some some issues, and he was out of the league for a little bit. But a little bit since he's since he's come back, I I haven't I've seen. For me, I've seen signs that say that he's on the right track. I don't have the concerns of like, oh man, this guy, what is this guy out doing? Like, I don't, I, I just feel like I haven't heard anything about that. Or I haven't seen anything like that to make me, uh, I guess, have a, a fear of that. Um, he didn't have a full kind of off season when he came into the league last year to really kind of get acclimated and back in the league. So I think he's had that this year. He was still trying to be reinstated. You're right. Uh, so he's had that this year. They got a lot of. You know, the culture shift, I guess you could say, going on in Cleveland, possibly. Uh, if Tyrod is the quarterback, when Sammy Watkins had a decent uh, year, Tyrod was a, a part of that. So he's he could be a kind of guy like that. They got a lot of weapons. Yeah, it's going to get spread around, but you can't double no team one guy's going to get locked down by everybody because you got to respect a lot of the talent in different positions there. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I think he could be a value uh, at that. I think that's good. Uh, where, do you, where should he go to you? Like the sixth. Back in sixth round, seventh round, where like it's comfortable, comfortably your third wide receiver. That if he does pop, it's he pays huge dividends. If he doesn't pop, it's not going to completely dismantle your team. Where you're just like, wow, I could have had a you know a guy like a Jarvis Landry or a guy like whatever Demarius Thomas around that. Where like you know you're going to get a consistent year out of somebody. 
it, you're taking a gigantic shot. It's almost like, you know what, I, I guess like I can see both your guys' points because you guys are like this during like the, the Thursday night triple threat, you know, the wall bet or your flex guys. Like you take those guys that have tremendous upside, but if they – if they don't hit, like it doesn't kill you. But for me, I like the consistency. I want a guy that I know is consistent, and he is the opposite of that. He is everything but consistent to me, and I don't want to take a shot in the dark in my fourth round for a pick that high on a guy that has all these concerns, not only just off the field issues, but just being consistent and the quarterback issue. I don't know if it's going to be Tyrod. Is it going to be Mayfield? It could be Tyrod for half the season. I don't really know what's going on there. I like both those guys, but. I want a guy that's going to be consistent. I want a guy that's going to go into a situation knowing I know who the starting quarterback is, I know who the offensive coordinator is, the guy's clean, he's off the field, no injuries, no no history of that kind of stuff. I like the safe pick, and you guys tend to go with the guy that's the boomer bust, and a lot of times that does work out, and it could win you championships. But when it doesn't work out, you're, you're, you're SOL. Now I mean, your guy's out of the league. I don't know if you're SOL. I mean, your second uh, receiver, you lose him forever, but I he's think gone. He would be SOL. Okay, Calvin if Johnson, he was your first receiver. Well, Calvin Johnson is a perfect example. Uh, he up and retires. Like that guy who had Calvin Johnson is SOL. Like that guy who's got, he's like, this is my number one. Maybe he's his number two if he went uh, receiver, receiver. Who knows? But the guy just up and retires. Like something like that. This guy could just up and fail a drug test and just be gone. And now, like you don't, you don't get a trade for him. You don't get a rookie pick for him. You don't get to replace that guy. He's just gone forever. I don't want to take. I don't want to. But you have to look at where he's going, James. Like if you like if you had a first round pick that was at the fourth pick of the draft and you got Antonio Brown, okay, and then you decided to go running back, running back with your next two picks, and then the fourth round rolls around, you get Josh Gordon. I wouldn't be. Josh here. Gordon all of a sudden gets suspended after one game of the season. You still have two decent running backs and Antonio Brown. Now you're just done. The season's gone. Uh, you're gonna be hurting a little bit, yeah. Uh, I don't know about Okay, that. I mean, yeah, whatever. Split, split, unless here. you yeah. bomb the end of the draft. Yeah, I'm not saying that Josh right. Gordon can't work out. Like, it's possible he can't. I just don't want to take that risk. And yeah, I would yeah. definitely, like right now, if you're, if you're going to go pay for Josh Gordon, you none of us own him in any league, I don't think. Right? Correct? Correct. What would you pay for Josh Gordon in rookie value picks? For this season, rookie picks? Rookie picks? Yeah. Like, if oh, somebody's right. like, hey, I'm going to give you Josh Gordon, what, what's his worth? Like, multiple first-round picks? No, not for oh, me. No, of course not. Okay, so would, one? You wouldn't be able to get it. I don't think you well, it, it that's so subjective, I think, as well. Uh, to what? Because everybody doesn't have, most likely, doesn't have the same amount of picks. Trades have gone on. You probably have guys that you you could ship a player and a pick. You could, there's but a lot what, of different things. You but could what do. I'm saying, we always do this, and you guys always give me an answer of like, uh, hey, where would you take? Oh, I give up the 204 for him, or I give up the one. So what's the difference? About this? I would give up a late first round, uh, but the guy that owns Gordon probably wouldn't take a late first round. That's the whole point. Right. I mean, that's what like, I was would to you say. give like, up 107? I have the 112. I would give up the 112 for Josh Gordon, but now, how I high would throw in something else? Jay, what I'm saying take. is, how high would you go? 107? 106? Like 105? Uh, it's normal, normal uh, question. Okay. Would you rather have Josh Gordon or DJ Moore? That's probably where I would put him Gordon because because DJ Moore is about the one oh seven ish area. Right. That's why that's why I asked DJ Moore is. Right. So to me that I, I'm probably gonna get absolutely annihilated for this, but I'll take my chances with DJ Moore going into the Carolina Panthers offense with a clean everything, being twenty two years old or whatever he is, and I'll take my chance with him. I would I would probably take Gordon. I, would, I, would probably I mean, yeah, Gordon. if you want the guy that could Obviously, DJ Moore is not going to come out and get 90 catches either, or 85 catches probably even. But as far as career goes, he's got a steady quarterback in Cam Newton. They just signed uh, CJ Anderson. You still have McCaffrey. They have a lot of pieces there that are in place that I don't think are going anywhere anytime soon. So I feel more comfortable taking a guy that's going to be on that offense as opposed to somebody that's on the Cleveland Browns. Who let's just look at the history of the Cleveland Browns. Every time it looks like it might work out, it doesn't. So I wish them luck, and I do think they're going to have a decent season. I just don't want to take that chance. Yeah, I mean that's a narrative. I mean. People don't like to buy into the Browns. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, I feel like last year, I don't know about you, Jay. I, I know how you feel, uh, James. Uh, but when you saw Gordon out there, yeah. the, the whole thing for the Browns was kind of a hot mess. Mm -hmm. There were a few games that they were in, uh, and a lot of it came down to the quarterback play, turning over the ball uh, in, in bad spots. So with that terrible quarterback play, him being kind of, you know, he didn't look terrible. He looked at times where, like, why aren't you getting him the ball? He looks like he's he's open, or he could have done more last year. I felt right. I felt like you could see that. So now you got a whole whole off season. Uh, maybe get a quarterback in there that isn't going to turn the ball over quite like that in bad times. I think that consistency 
is going to come up. I don't think it was from Tyrod. No. Tyrod's probably the most inaccurate quarterback in the league, or uh, one of them. No. no Tyrod Taylor. No. No, you have to look that up because he's not. He's not great. He doesn't throw. He didn't make a lot of mistakes. He didn't throw for a lot of yards, but he didn't make a lot of mistakes either. Okay. Uh, well, and he's actually pretty. Is good that what you want? Ball. Is that what you want in your quarterback though? If you have a guy in the fancy that's fancy relevant and wide receiver, and you're like, he doesn't throw for a lot of yards, but I'm like, no, you want a guy that's going to throw the ball. I don't want Tyrod as my quarterback, but I don't mind having not. his receivers. I don't think Tyrod. I, I think Tyrod's underrated. Um, he gets a bad rap, I, I, I think. And plus, he was in Buffalo, where it was a hot mess there, basically. But when he was kind of connecting yeah. with him, and now he's in Cleveland. Him, Right? How is it a hot mess? mess? How is it a hot mess in Cleveland mess. when it, everything's changed there? Right. That, that's why it's kind of a mess right now is because there's so many changing parts. I'll take, you don't, you don't I'll have take a bunch Todd Haley as offensive coordinator to, to whatever they had last year in Buffalo. Okay. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of good, good pieces. Uh, I think they've been making some good moves. Uh, I don't think you could say the same thing necessarily for uh, Buffalo. They were bringing in Jordan Matthews and Kelvin Benjamin and they got Zay Jones. and it, It's kind of a mess. I, I don't know what else to say. Um, okay, so anyways, I think we spent enough time on... Uh, Tyrod Taylor, 16th in quarterback percentage. Last okay, season. so he's not the worst. Well, I mean, if you're considering the guys that are behind him played like three games, like Trevor Simeon, Jacoby Brissett, C.J. Beathard, Deshaun Kaiser, those are the guys that are... Beathard only played a couple games. All those other guys you named played multiple, multiple games. So, right. and, and I'm saying, look at those guys. Brett, Brent Hundley. Brett Hundley's behind him, like... Well, okay. Weren't the what was the situation like for uh, Tyrod last season? It was a mess. He had a, a team that was committed to him and, and no. jerking his chain around and all kinds of crap going on. Uh, well, I, so do you guys like Baker Mayfield or Tyrod to be the starter? Doesn't it sounds like you guys are kind of on, on Tyrod. I now. think I think either one is fine for Josh Gordon. I'd mean, rather have Mayfield for sure, but I mean I don't know. He's a rookie. I mean you, I'll take my chances. You might, I might I might rather have a vet. Uh, and let Mayfield kind of get the hang of things. If I'm thinking Josh Gordon perspective, but I mean I wouldn't be I wouldn't be sad with either one of them. I think either one of them would be fine for Gordon. Yeah. Okay. All right, Jay. Uh, moving on. Let's move on to this guy, Kelvin Benjamin. A hundred of the Bills. A hundred and twenty-first overall. You can have him in the tenth round, the ten oh one to be exact, and he's the wide receiver fifty-six. Um. Obviously, I'm going to stick with the theme, uh, the, the theme of loving his value because you're talking about a possible wide receiver one for a team. Mm-hmm. Granted, it's a bad team, but the wide receiver one at the 56th spot as a wide receiver, the 10th round. What are your guys' thoughts on Kelvin Benjamin and where he's going? I think it's good value. Yeah, I'm not a fan, really, of Benjamin, but, I mean, I would, I would take him there. I as would. you're getting down to the nitty-gritty, you probably already have you probably already have four receivers, right? And you probably have three running backs, maybe a quarterback, maybe even four running backs, maybe a tight end also. Now you're getting into the 10th round, and you can still get a guy that's considered that team's number one. They have to throw to somebody. And from what we've seen, Buffalo's defense is just kind of middle of the road. So they're obviously going to be maybe behind in games. And you don't know if it's going to be Josh Allen throwing to him or A.J. McCarron throwing to him. But if you can get a chance to get a number one wide receiver that late in the draft, I'm in on that. Yeah, I don't care what team it's on, but just the fact that he's a wide receiver one, I mean... For yeah. that team. I just don't... I'm not a huge Kevin Benjamin fan, but neither am I. And I'm not going into a like, draft I actually looking. Got him, I got him in a trade uh, as like kind of a throw. Can you turn the TV off, by the way? I'm sorry, because it's making a... Uh, I got him in a, in a, like a th- as a throw-in kind of uh, deal, and I had him on my team for maybe, I don't even know, a week-ish, and then flipped him to somebody else, because I just don't... I don't want to rely on him because if he is a wide receiver one, it's going to work out. But you have A.J. McCarron and Josh Allen, like we said. I just don't – I don't know. That whole offense to me seems like it's up in shambles. I had uh, two shares of LaShawn McCoy. I traded both of him in the offseason. I just don't want any part right now of the Buffalo Bills offense because I just don't – I just don't believe in it, which I didn't believe in it last year, and they had a really good season, and it worked out. And then they went and kind of blew everything up. So let go of Tyrod. They go and draft the quarterback. Then they go and get A.J. McCarron. You don't know who's going to be a starter there. I just don't – I don't feel comfortable with anybody on that offense starting every single week. But if you're telling me he's going to be my fourth guy or he's fifth, fifth wide receiver, then I'll definitely take a shot on him and draft him for sure where he's going. Yeah, because I'm like I said before, I'm not going into a draft looking for but Kelvin Benjamin. But if I'm sitting there with four receivers already and I get him as my fifth, right? And then if an injury does happen or like a flex spot or bye weeks happen, I can slide this guy right in and play a few weeks. Yeah, he's definitely not somebody I want starting every single week. But to get him in the tenth round to me is just outstanding value. What about rookie, uh, or if you had to trade him? Ugh. 
I'm not trading for him in a dynasty start. You know what I mean? Like I, I have the two hundred five. I would give up the two hundred five for him. That's the highest I can go, and that's that's pretty high. That's only because of his would. age and, and the position that he's in. I waited to see. Oh, Buffalo's going to go out and get a couple of of, uh, of good wide receivers in the draft. Oh, they're going to go out and get a couple of wide receivers in free agency. Oh, they're going to come, and they just didn't. Like they didn't address it whatsoever, in my opinion. So. To me, he is the going to be the guy there for at least a whole season for this season because they didn't go out and get anybody. Yeah, there's no one currently on the Bills roster that can overtake no him one for that spot. No one. So, and he's still a big guy. He's six foot five. That's like what he's, he's gigantic. So that's why I mean, two hundred five. Still I'm, six foot. Yeah, but I mean, he's I mean still he's, a big guy. he slims <laughs> down a little bit. He was he was fat there for a little bit, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I like him, but not enough to trade him higher than maybe a middle middle second round. Yeah, I think where you get where you're getting him in the startup, yeah, it's 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 worth it. Take it, take a chance. You can flip him if he flashes. If you don't like him, but he's good depth. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, he's I, definitely I a guy that, that that if if he shows some flash at the very beginning, ship him. Yeah, I'm definitely trying to to wheel and deal with somebody maybe depleted at wide receiver. Maybe they only have two good wide receivers and they need a third or something like I'm that. Like, you bro, you want this wide receiver one? Yes. You want a wide receiver one? You're gonna have to pay. And if then he has like, let me get a back games. in first. Yeah, a couple <laughs> new games and he's very easy to sell. Start with the back end first and work your way. All right. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about this guy here because his situation has obviously changed a little bit in the last few days. Jordan Matthews, 168 overall, 1401 is where you can have him, 14th round of a dynasty startup. He's wide receiver 74. Man. And he moves into a situation where, as of right now, as of this recording, Julian Edelman is suspended for the first four games, and he's 32 years old. Jordan Matthews, I believe, turns twenty six this season. He had he had really good seasons in Philly as a slot the right. guy. But the issue is, is that that's all New England seems to be is slot guys. Uh, I mean, they did let go of Amendola. Now Edelman's out essentially for the first couple of weeks. Right. They let go of Cooks. They let go of Cooks. So as of right now, who's the slot guy there? You got Hogan. You have Jordan Matthews. You have Malcolm Mitchell. Who who am I missing? Edelman, but obviously he's suspended. I don't even know if you have it, Mitchell, really. We right. don't really know. His injury, I, too, right? I think, yeah, the guy that gets the, the little bump here that first four weeks. Has to be him. Is Matthews, probably, and, and Hogan, probably, and Edelman will slide right back in. But, yeah, where he's going there that late, yeah, slide me up. Throw him on the back end of my roster. All Absolutely. Day. Yeah. 75th, uh, you know, 74th receiver taken, and... You, you put him, and you don't even have to start this guy. You just hope that something happens in the first four games where he shows any kind of chemistry with Brady, and you'll easily be able to flip this guy. Anybody on New England or, like, uh, um, the, the Packers, the Saints, any of those guys pop on the receiving core, and you can flip those guys so easily because everyone looks at them like they're the highest-powered offense, and they score at will. So that's definitely a guy, even more than Kelvin Benjamin more so, that if Jordan Matthews does anything in the first four weeks – I'm sending out offers to everybody if I own this guy. I'm trying to get rid of him uh, I ASAP. I don't know. I don't know if I... If I uh, you don't think you'd flip him? I don't know if I'd agree with it. No. I would probably... Get I mean, flustered. I might, but he would probably be a good depth guy for me. Like, if Edelman or somebody goes down on there, mm -hmm. like he's probably going to step in and, and be able to help you out. I mean, if I'm still kind of competing and contending, depending on the time of year, I think he's one of those good guys to have to get you through. Uh, the bye weeks and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if things go, you know, what was that way? Why are you what? I, I Seventy-four. Could, I could see flipping him as well. You know, I like to flip guys, but if I'm contending, I think that's a that's a great guy to have on the back end of your. See, roster. I like guys that are going around him more. Like if you look at the at the ADP of who's going around him mm -hmm. before him, just before him, uh, Tyrell Williams, just after him, Dante Moncrief, uh, Kiki Cote. Or Cote. Cutie. Uh, Q yeah. Cutie. Yeah. Uh, Taiwan Taylor, Quincy Nunwa. I like these guys. Albert Wilson, Jamon Moore, Deshaun Hamilton, Keelan Cole, Deshaun Jackson, maybe not Mohamed Sanu, Kevin White, John Brown. All those guys that are going after him. I kind of put them all in the same boat as well. And I, I think that their roles might be a little bit cemented more in the future as like Jordan Matthews where Patriots receivers and tight ends and, and that whole thing is always jumbled. It's always, there's never a guy. It's, it's been Edelman, but now and Edel, Edelman and Amendola kind of go back and forth a little bit, but Amendola's gone and Edelman's getting older now. I just don't know where the, how everyone's going to fit in. Well, he's they always signed, carry so many receivers. He signed a one-year deal. Mm -hmm. So if things don't work out for him, he's probably not going to be back in New England, but doesn't mean he's going to go to a worse situation. 
Like, he could go somewhere where they're in dire need of wide receiver. Like, obviously, New England's not in dire need of receiver. He could go somewhere that needs him as, like, the main slot guy every yeah, down. He is 25. He turns 26 uh, in a month. But Okay, so he's, yeah. So during the season, he'll be 26, but he's still 25 years old. So he's and, still got some. And he's dropping a little bit. He was, uh, he's dropped 11 spots and uh, from, Since from, May. May, from May to June, which is kind of weird. You would think that he'd be trending up. But the Julian Elman thing kind of just happened, so yeah. I'm sure that hasn't yeah. affected that it yet. It hasn't affected, which means he'll be moving up probably, I would assume, in the mm-hmm. drafts. I bet you he moves up probably like the 13th round. Right. Because right now he's at the very... But, I mean, the, and uh, all, th- you got to remember, too, these are all mock drafts. They're not like real drafts where people are really making the decision and building their teams. No, no money's involved. Going through a mock, I mean, you're just taking the guys that you would rather have. And mm-hmm. he has lost that luster mm-hmm. over the last few years. Um, so, yeah, I could see a lot, some of those guys definitely going to that area, but in a real draft I could see some of those guys also falling a lot deeper because some of those rookies won't be I think that high necessarily it's just a it, one last thing for me anyways is it's is the it's a Tom Brady effect which is like let's say for example Brandon Cooks was a perfect example Brandon Cooks was with Drew Brees in in New Orleans and as soon as he went to New England everyone and I mean everyone that I talked to was all in on Brandon Cooks He's going to be with Brady. They're going to do this. He's going to get this. It's all I heard was Brandon Cooks' value was going up. Like, everything was up, up, up. He doesn't even make it a full season or barely a full season, and they ship him off right away. Like, clearly, it didn't work out there for whatever reason. They didn't click. And that's the that's the narrative in, in New England is if you don't click with Brady right away, and if you're not that specific type of wide receiver that he likes, they just don't even use you or they just throw you away and don't even care about it because, like you just said, he signed a one-year deal. So they really don't have any kind of tie to him whatsoever. No. So if he doesn't work out, then they're gone. It wasn't that they didn't click. Uh, they actually well, they didn't want to pay well. They didn't want to pay. It was, he was yeah. due like $16 million, and they was, didn't want to pay $16 million for a wide receiver. that's part of the plan. But did Brandon Cook's value plan. go up? But did his production go up? No, he stayed the same, and I think it's going to be the same in L.A. I think he's going to, uh, Brandon Cooks is what he is. He's he's going to overrate be very it, consistent. He's only overrated if you have him as your wide receiver one. If you have him as your wide receiver two, I think he's a great wide receiver two. If Cooks is your second receiver, great. he's been very consistent. Yeah, I think Cooks is. I think he's one guy know, I've never never know, owned in any league. I don't, I don't know if he's overrated. I don't think uh, he's overrated. I don't no. think he's overrated. I think uh, for for. You, when you've got a guy leaving Drew Brees and Saints offense and you you just expect this guy to go up, I think that's unrealistic. I think he's already at a good uh, echelon point, and if he's going to make that move, that's almost a lateral move. You're going from a great quarterback to a great quarterback. Right. Now you're going to kind of a great team kind of thing <laughs> going on. I don't know if Jared Goff's great. No, um, not yet. But, I mean, going to Brady, yeah, that's the narrative. It's easy to create in your head that, oh, my God, but – you're coming from Drew Brees, who's consistently right. in the top echelon of, of quarterbacks every year, and they throw a ton. Like, and they throw downfield a little bit more than, than the Patriots like to do as well. So I thought he did pretty well with the Patriots last year. He looked pretty good in some spots. I think they used him. I think that was just part of the plan. Uh, it was the end of his rookie contract. Is mm-hmm. that what was kind of going yes. on? So, yeah, th- I think that was a business kind of decision when they brought him in. They just didn't want to pay him, and they knew they knew that they were going to... They make moves like that, right. though. They're, they're very savvy. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I just uh, it's hard for me, I guess, to 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 pick somebody uh, that's going to be on New England's roster and be like this guy I'm going to rely on. But for where you're getting him at, you don't have to rely on him. So that's what these these three guys, all of them, except for for me, anyways. Josh Gordon is, is too high. But the other two guys, Kelvin Benjamin and Jordan Matthews, for where you can draft them, they're steals in those drafts. Because if they do work out, then it could be a, a huge part of your not only your starting roster. They could you know you could start them as your third or fourth receiver, or you can go out and get rookie picks for these guys if they do pop, and it's worth the chance because they're only 25, 26 years old, and both of them could be wide receiver ones on their team, which is pretty scary. Right. Like Jordan Matthews could be a wide receiver one, and you're getting him in the what round? 14th? 14th round. 14th round? Ah, I don't know if he could be. I mean, like, who? I'm not scared Malcolm Mitchell's going to get out for a Chris Hogan. So you have Chris, Chris Hogan. Hogan. Okay. Yeah, you got Gronk still there. Oh, I'm I mean, talking about wide receiver one, though. I understand. But, yeah, but. Not Finchy tight end one. As a wide receiver one? No, no, no. Wide receiver one on their team. Um, I think on some teams that's that doesn't exist on some teams. Like, I don't know if that exists really on the Patriots. Even when they had. Doesn't exist on Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah I don't I, I don't know uh, like there's some teams that have that one guy Julio Jones he's he's the number one like like Antonio Brown like but there's some that they, they just you can't make you can't fit a round peg into a square hole or whatever it is and I think that's kind of 
like for Jordan Matthews, I think that's kind of square peg into a round hole. Whatever it is, man, a triangle peg into an <laughs> octagon hole, like whatever. You might be able to fit a triangle yeah. into an octagon hole. Yeah, it depends on the size depends. of the octagon. Right, it won't fit snug. It'll be a little bit jiggle, jiggle yeah. around a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Uh, is there anybody else that you guys want to talk about? We're at thirty minutes. It should be good. So that's that's telling that's, us that's to a say roll. No? Yeah, is that the response you want? Yeah, you guys ready to crack? No, one? we're good. Yeah, let's crack one, brother. No, let's crack a cold one because we can go on and uh, do some more of these later. Let's crack it. Then. Crack it. <laughs>